Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, my name is Rohit. I'll be talking about stable fractional matchings. This is based on joint work with Yanis Karjianis, Aris Pilos Ratsikis, and Panajotis Canelo Pulos. Okay, so as I'm sure almost everybody in this room knows what the stable matching problem is, but just to make sure we're on the same page, let me do a very quick recap. So the stable matching problem consists of two sets of agents, referred to as say men and women. Each agent has a preference ranking over the members of the other set. So for example here, W1 prefers M3 over M2 over M1. And a matching of men and women is said to be stable if there is no blocking pair. So for example, say we have a matching like this. This matching is not stable because there is a pair of agents, M2 and W2, who prefer each other over their assigned partners. Such a pair tends to destabilize the matching and is called a blocking pair. And a stable matching is one that does not have any such pair. Thankfully, we know from the seminal work of Gale and Shapley that a stable matching always exists, no matter what preferences we are given. And in fact, there is an efficient algorithm for computing a stable matching. So the model of Gale and Shapley, which I'm going to call the standard model, it makes two important assumptions. One, it assumes that the matchings are integral, meaning two agents are either completely matched or completely unmatched. The model also assumes that agents have ordinal preferences, typically specified in the form of ranged order lists. In our work, we are going to generalize both of these assumptions. So instead of integral matchings, we are going to work with fractional matchings, which means that the matching weights can be anything between zero and one as well. These kind of matchings are a relevant model for time sharing applications where, for example, say an employer can split his or her time in working over multiple jobs rather than just working with a single employer all the time. We're also going to generalize the ordinal preferences to a cardinal preference model, which means that each agent now has a numerical utility for every agent instead of just having a ranking. And this is a relevant model for uh, modeling, say, wages in labor markets. Okay, so just to be more concrete, we once again have these two sets of agents, and instead of ordinal preferences, we now have these numbers or valuations. So for example, M1 values W3 at two, W2 at one, and W1 at zero. And likewise for all the other agents. A fractional matching is an object that satisfies these feasibility constraints. So for example, think of a matching that puts a mass of 0.5 on all these dashed edges. This is a valid fractional matching because it satisfies non-negativity and it uses up one matching mass of every agent. We assume that agents have linear utilities, meaning the utility of any agent is the sum of the matching weights that it is part of, which are scaled by the valuations. So in this, for this particular matching, uh, the utility of W1 is three times a half plus one times a half, which is two. And the important definition is stability, which means that for every pair of agents, at least one of the agents satisfies the utility threshold for that pair, okay? So for every man-woman pair M and W, either the utility of the man is above his valuation of the woman, or the utility of the woman is at least her valuation for the man. At least one of these two conditions must be satisfied. And it's easy to see that the matching shown here is actually not stable because for the pair M to W2, both of these agents fall below their respective utility thresholds. Here's another example. So now uh, there's a matching Y which puts a mass of one on the stop edge and a mass of half on these dashed edges here. This matching is actually stable. In particular, now you can see that W2 satisfies the utility threshold for the pair M to W2. And in fact, that's true for every pair. I want to remark that uh, this definition of stability is not new to our work. It has been studied before, especially in the economics literature. What is new is some of the computational questions that I'm going to talk about soon. But before I get into that, let me make a, a couple of observations. So first of all, a stable fractional matching in the sense that I just described always exists. And the simple reason is that this model is a generalization of the Gale Shapley model, and so we get the existence result for free. Perhaps more interesting implication concerns the welfare of the matchings. 
So one can show that there is an instance with cardinal preferences where the welfare of a stable fractional matching can exceed the welfare of any of the integral stable matchings. Okay, so in fact, the, the instance that I showed you earlier satisfies this. So this instance has three factorial integral matchings, only two of which are stable. And each of those stable matchings has a welfare of seven, just the sum of the agent's utilities. However, the matching that I showed you earlier, which was stable, has a welfare of 7.5, which is more than the welfare of any of these two integral stable matchings. Okay? And it's easy to see that you can actually make this welfare gap arbitrarily large just by making copies of this instance. So given the fact that stable fractional matchings really give us significant advantage in terms of welfare, we have a natural computational question at hand, which is how do you find optimal stable fractional matching? Okay. So more specifically, given an instance with cardinal preferences, does there exist a stable fractional matching with at least a certain amount of welfare? And that's the central computational problem in our work. Now, the complexity of this question depends quite intricately on the valuations. So if the valuations are simple in the sense that the valuations only take the value 0 or 1, they are binary, or you can think of them as like or dislike preferences, then there is a polynomial time algorithm for computing an optimal stable fractional matching. Interestingly, as soon as we move to a slightly broader class of valuations, the ternary class where the valuations can take values 0, 1, and some number c bigger than 1, the picture becomes much more interesting. So let me describe the results pictorially instead of giving the formal statements. So think of this line segment as the multiplicative approximation to the welfare of the optimal stable fractional matching. Okay? So the optimal stable fractional matching is sitting right here at the extreme. And if you are at half, you are getting 50% approximation. So our main result is that you can get a 1 over c, doing anything better than a 1 over c minus half approximation is a computationally hard problem. Okay? So this, this is a very strong and approximability result, even in this very, very simple class of valuations. But not all is lost, so we have some positive news. Uh, it is possible to achieve uh, an approximation ratio of 1 over c or 1 over half, whichever is less, in polynomial time. So for example, if c is equal to 3, meaning the valuations can be 0, 1, or 3, then you can get 33% in poly time, but doing anything better than 40% is hard. We have a slightly weaker uh, approximation for general valuations where we don't make any such assumption uh, on the values that the valuations can take. So all of these results that I just described are for the exact version of stability. We also study approximate stability. So a, a matching is epsilon stable if it's, it's, it's just like the original version of stability, but the utility thresholds are now scaled by 1 minus epsilon. Okay? And for epsilon stable matchings, we actually have matching upper and lower bounds. So it is possible to achieve uh, epsilon approximation to the welfare in polynomial time. And I, I should remind you that this approximation is with respect to the broader class of epsilon stable matchings. And it turns out that doing anything better than that is, is computationally hard. OK, so the hardness results are while they are the technically the most interesting part, they're actually quite involved, so I'm not going to go into that. I will instead go, I will, I will instead just describe the algorithm. So the first algorithm I want to talk about concerns binary valuations. Uh, and here's how the algorithm works. So in the first step, we compute a welfare maximizing matching without the stability constraint, okay? Just the optimal matching. It's, it's easy to see that this, is, this can be done in polynomial time, and in fact, this matching is integral without loss of generality, but it may not be stable, okay? It might have blocking pairs. Because the valuations are binary, any blocking pair must be along a one-one edge, right? So in terms of feature, say M1, W1 are a blocking pair, they both should value each other at one, but they're not matched to each other. And because the matching is integral, their utilities must be zero because it has to be strictly below one. And in fact, the picture looks like this. So M1 should be matched to some woman he values at zero, and W2 should be matched to some man she values at zero. Okay. 
And OK, so because, the, because this is an optimal matching, it, it maximizes the welfare, we can actually fill in these missing valuations. There's just one way to fill, fill in these valuations. Otherwise, we can do a welfare improvement. Okay? So because of optimality of this matching, the, the, if there exists a blocking pair in the optimal matching, it must look like this. Okay? And now the algorithm is very simple. So whenever we see a blocking pair, we just do a toggle. We just, we just swap the edges and we fix the blocking pair. So a couple of operations, uh, a couple of observations. First, that this, this toggle operation uh, does not change the welfare because earlier the welfare was one plus one, two, and now it's like two plus zero, two. So there's no change in the welfare. And the utilities of other agents are, of course, unchanged. More importantly, though, whenever we do such a toggle operation, we consume a 1, 1 edge, and we never free up a 1, 1 edge. Okay? And because there are only so many 1, 1 edges, this algorithm has to terminate in quadratic time. Okay. So the next algorithm I want to talk about concerns epsilon stable matchings. So here, uh, just as before, we are going to, again, compute the optimal matching. And in addition, we're also going to compute a stable integral matching, say, using the deferred acceptance algorithm of Gillen Shapley. And the algorithm is just <clears throat> one line. Just output this convex combination of the stable matching and the optimal matching. OK? Why is this matching epsilon approximation? Well, because the ut utilities are linear, and so is the welfare. And it puts an epsilon mass on the optimal matching. So that's, why we get, that's where we get the welfare approximation. And for the stability approximation, we, we get it from this term here. right? So MS is stable. For every pair, at least one of the agents meets the, ut the utility threshold. And when we scale the, the welfare by 1 minus epsilon, the same happens with the 1 minus scaling over here, which is exactly the epsilon stability condition. OK, so in summary, I, I told you that the computational problem for finding optimal stable fractional matchings is hard, even in very simple settings, like ternary evaluations. But it is possible to give polytime algorithms for simpler settings, such as binary evaluations or for epsilon stable matchings. There are a couple of interesting open questions. So the hardness results that I, did, I described to you were for ternary evaluations, meaning if there are many agents, there could be ties in the preferences, right? So what happens when there are no ties, when the cardinal preferences for every agent are strict? Another open question is, can we obtain stronger and approximability results for a more general matching model? Right? So, say, so, so what about stable roommates, for example? OK, so that's all I had to say. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Fractional matchings are like the natural model for randomization. So what I described to you is like an ex ante notion of stability. Uh, there's a, so we have some other results in the paper that I did not talk about, which is that these matchings are not ex post stable, so they can have unstable matchings in the support. And in fact, this is, there's a very strong negative result saying that some stable matchings can only have unstable support. So, so uh, there's some interesting computational implications as well. So integral matching is a fractional matching, right? So it, of course, it's greater than or equal to. And in the example that I described, it's strictly bigger. So how bad could be the equation of that? So when there is a group of integrals, and each other is bad. It could be really bad. Just create copies of that. In terms of ratio, uh, in terms of ratio as well. So that will depend if, if your valuations are large. Uh, and we have some examples in the paper. Yeah, yeah. Then, then, you cannot do, then you cannot make it arbitrarily bad, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.